if you know anything about the United States, you know that Florida has a special place in the Great 50. And Daytona Beach is Florida's Florida. It's got everything you think of when you think of the Sunshine State. Beaches, palm trees, scrub, crime, bikers, and of course, a little outdoor arena known as Daytona International Speedway. In 2004, I was doing freelance production work that just happened to place me at Daytona International Speedway. And upon arriving, I realized that part of the setup process was to drive my vehicle under the tunnels to the infield of the track and then drive on the track around to where the production truck was. And I remember at the time being so angry that I had chose to drive my 2003 Dodge Neon because I was told very specifically we would not be driving on the track. And well, it was only for a thousand feet or so, I did still get to say that I had driven on Daytona. And I thought that was that. I would not get that chance again. But 18 years later, not only do I find myself back in Daytona, but I'm following Herbie around, and Herbie doesn't know where he's All going. Right, we've made a wrong turn. So now we're on the sidewalk at the speedway. We're going to drive on the track and on the sidewalk. So after we finished driving on the sidewalks of Daytona International Speedway, we found our way around to the back entrance and wound our way around to the massive structure that is Daytona. To get to the infield, you have to drive under the track through this tunnel. And it was the perfect complement to the anticipation that we were feeling as we were headed towards the track. Oh, this is gonna be cool. So go-karts as well. Then we realized we were behind a bunch of Volkswagens that were stopped on a hill. And we hoped all their clutches worked. They did. Being at Daytona is surreal enough for me. But pulling into the lineup next to a string of Herbies, and looking over and seeing Joaquin Gray III, the actor who played Paco in my favorite childhood Herbie movies, was definitely a step above the normal amount of surreal for me. While the weather was looking a little menacing in the beginning, all reports were indicating that it was going to clear up and be a beautiful day. And it was correct. In fact, by the time we had finished getting set up, it was one of the nicest days I've ever experienced. The attitude overall was extremely positive. Everyone was super friendly. We were all incredibly excited because this had already been a legendary weekend and to cap off the entire event with the rare opportunity to actually drive on the track was definitely an exciting moment for all these. Even if it was just for a parade lap, it certainly sparked a lot of excitement. We were definitely not the only non-Volkswagen at this event. Plenty of other people had taken the opportunity to bring everything from other kinds of Volkswagens to their regular daily drivers, some a little older than others. In fact, if you watch carefully, there's a South American VW SP2 in here. It's pretty cool. And yes, the Herbie number 10 from Herbie the Love Bug and Herbie Rides Again did show up and drove on the track with us, which was also very cool. They lined us up and told us that we were going out 75 cars at a time to do three parade laps. We would be driving largely around the main section of the track with a diversion onto the road course section, which meant we would get to turn left and right. We were in group number two. Group number one was primarily Herbies, and group number two was all the late Herbies and us. So after we had patiently waited and watched the other Herbies stroll down the track, it was finally our turn. I had a very specific playlist that I wanted to play while we were driving. So you're not going to hear that because I don't want to get any demonetization or copyright strikes. And I'm going to speed things up about eight times here because we were not allowed to drive above 40. And because these were Volkswagens, most of them topped out at 30. In fact, during most of this, my foot is not even on the gas pedal. We're just idling in third, which means I should probably adjust my idle. But that's a problem for future me.
We were told under no circumstances were we to actually drive up onto the bank of the track. And that, in fact, if we did drive up on the bank of the track, we were liable to a $15,000 fine. We were, however, allowed to drive wherever we wanted across the finish line. And that was a lot of fun. Dave Green of Flag to Flag Photography was there taking pictures, and I finally got around to purchasing a few of them. You can check out his link in the description below for all sorts of great photos from the event. Special thanks to Justin for taking my camera gimbal, which he had never operated before, and doing a yeoman's job of making that work while we puttered around the track. Once everyone was done, it was time to gather all the Herbies together for a group photo, of which we somehow managed to sneak in. I think we blend in just fine, though. What do you think? Gail and Joaquin wrapped up the event, and there was a lot of positive energy and cheers all around. And then it was time to carefully back out of a sea of Herbies without leaving any blue paint on them, and get back on the road, because Justin and I had heard about a little shop that seemed like a must visit, especially when you got a channel like this one. And we were not wrong. But first it was back through the tunnels, and of course you have to have a little fun when you're in a tunnel. It was nice to have Herbie join in the fun. After a quick stop at Hooligans, a Daytona Beach staple just a stone's throw from the speedway, we made our way to Awesome Toys Daytona, a lovely vintage toy shop run by some really cool people. In fact, one of their team members drove a Mazda MX-5 that was made up to look just like a real Hot Wheels. Wish I'd taken a picture of that. It's a decent sized shop, and you might think that there's not a lot of die casts when you first walk in, but you would be very wrong. Make your way to the back, and there's a gold mine to be had. If you're into vintage toys at all, I highly recommend to visit. If you're just into die cast and you're in the neighborhood, it's definitely worth adding to your trip itinerary. And with that, it was time to say goodbye to fabulous Daytona Beach and make our way back to Gainesville. I really can't thank Justin enough for helping set this up and make this trip a reality. It was a huge item on my bucket list and I'm so glad that I got to share it with him. It was a great few days and uh, you got to meet a lot of great people and find a lot of great die casts. But it felt really good to be home and have the Valiant back in its spot in the garage again. And that's it, our first segment on Destination Diecast. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. If you're curious what I found, I'll be doing a whole unboxing video, so be sure to like, subscribe, click the bell and all that so you don't miss it. And we're gonna have a special guest destination diecast coming up right after this one. So be sure to stick around. As always, I wanna thank you for coming along with me for the ride. So until next time, stay fresh, cheese bags.